How's it going students, it's your boy Mr. Stevenson and today's video is about main title slash rebel blockade runner from Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. Uh, that is a really long, long title so from here on I'm just going to refer to it as Star Wars. Uh, it was composed by John Williams and released with the film in 1977. It is therefore obviously an example of film music. Uh, some other film composers to check out for your further listening would be uh, Ennio Morricone, Hans Zimmer, James Newton Howard, uh, to name just a few. Have a listen to some of their music, see what they've got in common. Uh, it is an example of an overture. Overture in film music or in music for plays is the piece of music that is played at the very beginning. Uh, and it introduces the whole thing. It will use all of the light motifs that are used later in the play. A light motif is a, is a melodic or musical idea that is used to represent a character. Uh, the two main light motifs in this are the one for uh, Luke Skywalker, probably the most famous part of this music. You should be hearing that now. And there is another leitmotif in this, in the B section, which is a little bit darker. And this is the leitmotif for the Rebel Alliance and Obi-Wan Kenobi. You should be hearing that now. It is an example of non-diegetic music. Uh, in film music and indeed all sound in movies, uh, there are two sound can be put placed into two categories: diegetic or non-diegetic. Diegetic sound or diegetic music is stuff that can be heard by the characters in the movie. So stuff that occurs within the world of the film. So for instance, diegetic music could be if the, there is a shot showing a band playing on stage. Say for instance in Star Wars, if you if you're familiar with it, the cantina scene, that would be uh, diegetic music. Non-diegetic music is stuff that is added in to uh, to add to the mood of the uh, of the movie. So this is an example of non-diegetic music, and it soundtracks the opening titles. Uh, and it is used for underscoring. Underscoring is when music is added to enhance the action in the movie. Instrumentation. It uses a symphony orchestra. Uh, I'm not going to name all of the instruments in, an, in a symphony orchestra, but there's a lot of them. You can Google that and you can check that out. Uh, the melody is carried largely by the brass. Uh, brass section is, is a really kind of heroic sound in the orchestra. It sounds big and uh, kind of regal and bold uh, is a term one of my students used the other day, which I quite like. Uh, so for Luke's a leitmotif, it is, the melody is carried by the brass. In the second repeat of this leitmotif, uh, there is also a counter melody played by the strings. In the next phrase, after Luke's leitmotif on the brass, uh, the melody becomes carried by the strings. So that's the principal melody, the first melody. You should be hearing that now. Very good. Uh, the meter is in 4-4. Four, four. So the time signature of this is 4-4. Four, four. Uh, and it has a march-like feel. Uh, you get that from the real military sounding snare drums in that. In this. And that's to represent the two different armies. Uh, there is also a little bit of triple time at the end of this as well. Uh, you should be hearing those triplets now. The introduction features a fanfare, which you should be hearing now. A fanfare traditionally was used to introduce royalty, or to introduce uh, events that royalty would be attending. It's really triumphant sounding. 
it features big blasts of syncopated brass chords. The most important thing is that it uses brass. Uh, the fanfares are only played on brass instruments. Uh, in this instance, it is accompanied by a really relentless triangle rhythm. You should be hearing that now. So hopefully you can pick that out on the bottom of the brass. It's also accompanied with some timpanies. They are the huge drums that are used in an orchestra. Uh, the brass instruments play overlapping syncopated lines in this. Uh, and they come in one at a time, so the texture gets thicker and thicker and thicker, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, they come in in this order. Trumpets, trombones, horns, and then tubers. And it's built around a B-flat chord. The reason we use uh, B-flat, the whole thing uh, that... The fanfare and the, uh, the A section are both in B flat major. And the reason we use B flat major uh, for stuff that uses a lot of brass is that it's probably the easiest key for brass instruments to play in. Uh, that's because they all have open notes in that key. Uh, well, the trumpets and trombones do anyway. Um, French horns and tubers, I'm not actually too sure about. Maybe you could Google that yourself. Uh, but I know that it is an easy key for them to play in. They have open notes in that key, which means for the trombone, you don't need to move the slide to play some of the notes in that key. For the trumpet, you don't need to hold down any of the valves. So after that, we're into our A section, which remains in B flat major after the fanfare. Uh, the B section is in F major. Uh, this key change is known as a modulation. So it modulates as it goes into the B section. Um, it ends with a codetta. Should be hearing that now. So a codetta is like a coda, a coda being a section you use to finish a piece of music to end it, uh, but shorter. Codetta being literally means little coda. Uh, and there is some interesting, uh, some interesting harmony in this piece as well. There is some quartal harmony, uh, which is stacked fourths. Uh, if you look at the piano now, you will see me creating a chord of stacked fourths. I am going up a fourth interval from the root of the chord, so going up a perfect fourth, so that's five semitones, and then another perfect fourth, and then another. There are also some seventh intervals. Um, so that's the seventh note of the scale there. It, you can hear them quite strongly in bars five and six. And there's also something really nice. There's a Neapolitan chord in this, one of my favorite chords. Uh, that is a normal triad with, let's say we were playing a C, we would add on a C sharp at the top. So we are adding adding a, a note that is one semitone up from the octave of the root note. And these are very nice chords to be used to create moments of temporary dissonance. I think that's all I want to talk about today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Do listen to some more film music. Uh, have a listen to those guys I recommended at the start of the video. Try and find some stuff online to help you revise this stuff. And uh, yeah, happy revising. Hope you all do well in your exams, which are coming up year 11 real soon. All right, cool. See you later. Bye.